Hey guys and gals, how are we doing? It's me, Joe Sires, back here for the Music Factory Studios. So the last video I did, I was showing you the new console that I had brought to put into the studio. And today I'm going to show you the EQ curves of it. So as you can see on the screen right here, here is a markup of the EQ that's on the Soundcraft MH2. And it's a four band sweepable EQ. It's not really parametric, but you can pretty much get any frequency between 30 hertz and 20k so what i did here was i'm going to show you the high pass first it has a high pass that runs from 30 hertz to 400 hertz this is really handy on a console and you don't really see this much on analog consoles that aren't recording consoles so live consoles used to be really really good about 10 years ago and then digital kind of took over and really the high-end analog discs you can buy for like live music or for smaller to medium studios really doesn't have this option they mostly just have a high pass where you push a button and it cuts out everything below either 80 or 100 hertz but these soundcraft mh2s are from the same family as like the gb8s that soundcraft still sells this was the next tier up so there were three of them there was the mh4 which i originally owned which had a four band parametric fully parametric eq on it it was a, had a few nicer amenities and a lot more uh and a few more monitor buses and things of that nature then there was the mh3 which basically gave you an mh4 with less monitor sins and then there was this mh2 and i had the mh4 and the mh2 i sold the mh4 to another sound company that was doing way more work than we were and i kept the mh2 so when my Midas legend finally died, I, I was seriously thinking about getting another console, another Le uh, Midas console, probably a Heritage or another legend. I really like those discs. And then I remembered I had this in storage. So I went ahead and just thought, why not use it? It sounds good. It, this disc was not a cheap disc. This disc was like $30,000 when we picked it up. So it's, it's a great console. I'm going to show you the different curves here. This is the uh, the low shelf. And the Q of the mid bands is set at 1.5 on the Q. And as you can see here, it's the same basically boost as cut. I'm using two different channels here in this analyzer. It's a great analyzer. It's free. It's the Bartom EQ Curve Analyzer. And they have three plugins. One is a denoiser, this EQ analyzer, and one called Air Shelf. And they're all free. Just check out Bertum plugins. All that stuff is free. It's great. But as you can see, you can sweep around and pretty much get anything. It's a great tracking disc. The mic pre's in this sound amazing, to be honest with you. I was surprised at how well this thing sounded because I had never used it in a recording context. I had used it in live context, and it was fine for that. Each of the mic preamps run at 2,000 kilo ohms, which is pretty much box standard for mic preamps in consoles of this size. It has a different mic pre to the GB8, GB4, GB2, and LX7s from Soundcraft. It's a little bit quieter and it's a little bit cleaner sounding. The GB8 is super clean, so don't get me wrong. If you, if you want a GB8 or one of those GBs or the LX from Soundcraft for your studio, get it because the, the mic pre is gonna sound great. This mic pre just is a little bit brighter than those are. Just a, a little bit. And it's not that big of a difference. I have an LX7 in the drum room for rehearsals for live band practice. And the drums get mic'd up in there. Now, the reason there is a straight line at the top end of the EQ here is because I did this analyzing at 44.1 instead of 48. So that's the converter cutting it off at 22 and a half uh, kilohertz. But as you can see, this EQ is more than enough for anything you would want to do in a tracking scenario. This is the high shelf. And as you can see, it's more than enough. You get about 12-ish dBs of gain on the EQ. It's really good for boosting. It's not that great for cutting, but having that many options on an EQ is huge. Whereas the consoles you buy today from say Sweetwater or the other places, you're basically stuck with like a 12 or 10K shelf on the high end and a 80 to 60, 80, 60 or 100 hertz uh, 
low shelf on the bottom and then just sweep a little mids. Whereas this one, you can sweep through all four bands and that just makes it so much better during tracking. And this console has pre-EQ direct outs or post fader outputs. And you can change them just by opening up the console and on each channel, switching a little switch under it. And it makes it so much easier. But I can't say enough good things about this console. I'm gonna do some more videos on it. I know I've been away from YouTube for a while, but I've been really busy. I had to play catch up on a lot of work since the console was down. I had I was a, basically a week and a half behind, so that put my YouTube channel nearly a month and a half behind, and I apologize for anyone who follows this channel. And uh, I hope you enjoy these next few videos coming up about the Soundcraft MH2 and how a console can help your workflow to become better and just to get things into perspective about how great having that tactile feedback of using a console really is. And you can see how complex the EQ shapes are here. They can become very, very complex or very, very simple. This console is super low noise. So I didn't denoise anything. This is straight from the console into the analyzer. You can see how low the noise is in this console, which is great. I don't hear any noise coming from the mono inputs or the master bus. The, uh, the monitor sends, if you push them really, really hard, you might hear some, a little bit of noise, but it's lower than ambient noise. So it's not really an issue. Um, I have to say that this console was meant to compete with like the Midas legend or the heritage 1000s or like the Verona's and Sienna's of the Midas uh, line. And I have to say these consoles from Soundcraft are going super cheap. So once I got this one out, I was like, man, I wonder how much an MH4 or MH3 would be. And I was shocked when I went to reverb to find that some of these consoles were a thousand, two thousand dollars. Whereas a new GB8 is going to cost you like five grand. <laughs> and this is far superior to that console. These consoles have a better mic pre, far better EQ, and way better routing than the uh, than the GB consoles. They also have EQs on the, the aux sends and the returns and, you know, a few amenities that even the best live mixing analog discs don't really have. But as you can see, that was the EQ. And uh, next up, we'll talk about how inputs and outputs work and how to feed them into a recording setup. All right, guys and gals, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. And since you're already here on YouTube, check out one of these other videos on your screen right now. All right, guys and gals, have a great day, y'all.